Alright guys, this is the second to last lecture. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Almost done with 360. We're going to continue talking about epigenetics, right? Hmm, that's a new word. Epigenetics is the control of gene expression through other things aside from DNA sequence. So like heterochromatin and euchromatin, right? Remember, heterochromatin is closed DNA, not accessible to transcription factors. So compacted, in order to get gene expression, we must decompact or open, right? Back to euchromatin. So that's what we're going to talk about in this little lecture. And there are generally boundary elements that limit the areas of decompaction, so an entire chromosome doesn't need to open, just a specific area. The nucleosomes in this area uh, are a little bit unwound, so they can initiate transcription. So transcription factors come in and dislodge the histones, or deacetylate, right, the 5' prime end of genes. And then this can now interact with RNA polymerase, right? So Tata binding protein, RNA polymerase, we get transcription. So here's a little picture of naked DNA, right? That does not include um, nucleosomes. And this is what we talked about, right? The basal transcription factors, TBP, this would be the Tata box here, right? RNA polymerase gives us transcription. If the chromatin is wound up around the nucleosomes, it's impossible for RNA polymerase, TBP, to get in there and bind the Tata box, okay, because it's not available. So what happens is we remodel the chromatin, or we remove, move away the nucleosomes. There's a hypothesis that says that they're completely dislodged and then reassembled, and there's others that say they just smush together outside of the complex, right? Here's the initiation complex, the Tata box, right? There's TBP, or Tata binding protein. RNA polymerase, and as it's moving down to do transcription, right, it continues to dislodge the nucleosomes as it goes. And here we go again. It's epigenetic effects on gene regulation. Chemical modifications of DNA that help make heterochromatin or euchromatin. Okay, not DNA sequence. It is not a mutation. The only thing it has to do with sequences is that there is methylation, or a methyl group, that can be attached to the C, the cytosine, in CG sequences. So extreme condensation silences expression, what do I mean by that? Into heterochromatin. Okay, and we talked about that, right, in the centromere and near the telomeres is where heterochromatin is, right? Euchromatin can, contains the active genes, active regions of all the happen. So what is methylation? Methylation is adding this me methyl group onto the C of a CG, right? And so it's targeted for methylation. That C will be methylated by methyltransferase enzymes, right? DNA methyltransferase. And then the other strand will be methylated. So they call that hemimethylated because it's half, and this one's fully methylated on both strands. Methylation causes closing of the chromos chromosomes or chromatin and helps block transcription from happening. So here's another little picture. If you think about replication, if all of these cytos cytosines at the CGs are methylated, right? when we do replication, we're just doing uh, copying of the sequence, right? complementary base pairing, and so the new strands would be unmethylated, right? There's the new guys, start out unmethylated, finishes, methyl transferases come in and use the existing methyl group on the template strand or the parent strand in order to add the correct, right? This would be CG on this strand and CG on that strand in order to add the correct methyl groups on to those so that during replication it doesn't suddenly open up genes and they don't turn on in transcription unless they're supposed to. Okay, so this methylation or lots of methylation over uh, promoters of genes can help block transcription, right? 
Uh, we call these CPG islands. The CG, the P just stands for your phosphodiester bond between them. Yay. Right? Where there's lots of CGs near the promoters, lots of these CG rep repeats, which, right, lots of methylation keeps um, genes turned off. Right? So lots of these islands are unmethylated, and that keeps things on. But if we methylate them up, right, in tissue-specific genes, these can be turned off. So methylation, the more methylation you have, the more closed chromatin, the less transcription you get. Okay, transcriptional silencing via methylation, which is thought to block transcription factor binding in the promoters or enhancers. Okay, so if it's unmethylated, transcription factors can bind, right, either to the promoters or the enhancers of genes. If they're methylated, this guy doesn't get to bind. Right, we can also actually s silence the gene by methylation by helping introduce heterochromatin, right, like when we talked about in class, where if we're turning off a gene and we never ever want it back on, we're not just going to do... Uh, chromatin remodeling with the nucleosomes, we're actually going to stick it into heterochromatin. And so in this case, right, they're methylated up, and the methyl binding proteins recruit other proteins that help condense it down into heterochromatin. Okay, so methylation can do short-term silencing or actually long-term silencing by turning, by helping the chromatin in that region be, uh, become heterochromatin from euchromatin. Okay, so that's methylation. That's what methylation does. If you methylate DNA, you will silence it. You will close it down. If you really methylate it up, you can turn it into heterochromatin, which is permanently closed. The other epigenetic effect that we're going to talk about is histone acetylation, so an acetyl group on the histone tails, right, histone protein tails. Remember, our nucleosome is just this octet, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and the other guys hiding behind there. Okay, this, in this case, is the DNA wrapped around. Okay, the acetylation groups are on what they call the histone tails, parts of that protein, the amino acids that are sticking out, okay, can have acetyl groups added to them. When acetyl groups are added to the histones or to the nucleosomes, to the histone proteins, the nucleosomes are less tightly bound to the DNA. And so here we are, here we have them all nice tightly bound in the nucleosome. When they're acetylated, it loosens up the DNA that allows for remodeling to happen, that allows for RNA polymerase, TBP, to get in there and bind the promoter and start transcription. Okay, so in this case, if you acetylate your histones, you get genes on, right? So hyperacetylation, you're turning genes on. Hypo means you're turning them off. And DNA methylation almost always means off. So you can think acetylation on, methylation off. And those are both epigenetic effects because they're chemical modifications, right? A chem modification of DNA or histone, so of chromatin, because that could count as the DNA or the histone proteins, the protein associated with DNA, that is not a change in sequence, that is heritable and can be passed from generation to generation. Oh gosh, hetero, I'm trying to write hetero, how do you spell heritable? Heritable. Okay, right? Heredity? I don't know. It's late. I'm tired. So, yeah, I know. This is, I'm sure you feel so sorry for me. Yes, thank you for that. That really helps me. Okay, so for example, here's an example where if the acetyl groups destabilize the chromatin structure, right? Acetylated turns on. Right, transcription, translation, you get an activator protein that blocks flowering. Right, so if the activator blocks flowering, no flowers. Boo hoo. Right, that's sad. That guy should be crying again. If it's 
if we have a deacetylase, something that removes the acetyl groups, D remove, right? And now we restore chromatin. So we deacetylate, that means it turns off. If this blocking the flowers doesn't exist, right? No blocking, we get flowers. Right? Yay. That makes us happy because we all love flowers. Okay. So that is pretty much epigenetic gene regulation as we know it in um, the simplest form that we can. And so before we leave gene regulation, I want to go back and remind us of uh, transcription initiation and how that can be modified by enhancers. Now, we're going to go over this again, right? This is DNA. This is the double-stranded DNA, these lines, okay? So what does that mean? That means the core promoter and the regulatory promoter, or the proximal promoter, like we talked about in the transcription chapter, these are sequences, right? So sequence, so how do these guys act? How, what would we consider a promoter? We would consider a promoter in cis, right? The sequence of the Tata box is what TVP binds to. And so this picture down here, they're showing us how eukaryotic gene regulation can happen. We talked about the basal transcription apparatus, or the basal transcription, the core transcription factors, right? We have TBP, he's binding to the Tata box. We have our good friend RNA polymerase. And then remember we said there's lots of other proteins involved. One's called a mediator. There's lots of co-activators that only bind to other proteins and not to DNA. Transcriptional activator protein actually binds to a specific sequence in DNA. All of these accessory proteins, Tata-associated factors, right? Lots and lots of those. And so this, right, is the actual promoter. But that's not all we can have. There are sequences that have to be in cis, so they have to be on the same chromosome called enhancers that also bind transcription factors that can turn on transcription by having bent DNA wind around and interact with the other transcription factors. The mediator, it could, in, could interact with an, uh, just a regular transcription factor to really jack up transcription. And I think the example I used when we were talking about this transcription chapter when we introduced the enhancers was the white blood cells fighting disease, right? They always have antibody molecules, the B cell white blood cells that cruise around your body looking for bacteria. When they bump into one, right, that interaction of that antibody to that bacteria sends a signal to the nucleus to really crank up transcription of antibody genes. Like, holy cow, make all kinds of transcription happen, okay? And so what happens, that turns on some activator protein to bind to the enhancer, to cause the bending of the DNA, to interact with these guys, to really kick RNA polymerase in the butt. And here's the foot right there with the sock and the shoe, and it's about to kick RNA polymerase and go faster, land more, do more transcription, really turn that up. And so here's an idea. We can have a promoter sitting here, again in cis, an enhancer sitting here. How do we only have this enhancer work on this guy and not on this guy? In some cases, there's a sequence. Again, the insulator is a sequence, so that's actually in cis. It has proteins to bind to it that are in trans that don't allow enhancers probably to bend. It must inhibit the bending of this enhancer around to bring its transcription factors together. And so this guy can only work over here, and this guy can only work on that side. So that's a lot of reasons why these enhancers are controlled, because of insulator elements. And it's way more complicated than this, but it just gives you an idea of how you know, if there's enhancers all the way up and down your chromosomes, how they can only work on their own promoters and not other ones. Okay, and then this is just an idea, some examples of different transcription factors, right, and what they're called, right, again, this is our promoter, right, right here, our core, 
This would be our promoter proximal, right, or our regulatory promoter. And then these enhancers can be, right, there can be 10,000 base pairs in between nucleotides, right? They can be anywhere. They can be up here. Enhancers can be down there. And they all help bind, right? They bind activating transcription factors, bend around, and get involved with the Tata binding protein RNA polymerase and all of those other transcription factors that bind there. Okay, so each promoter in the in eukes, right, looks a little different, has different binding sites, different consensus sites for different transcription factors. So the combination of transcription factors is what determines the on-off of this gene or the level of expression. And that's eukaryotic gene regulation. The rest of this lecture we are not doing. Yay, right? Hey, where's that guy? Where's the guy that that should be happy? Okay, no, 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 no. Not funny. Not funny. You're just supposed to be happy. Okay, no, no, no. Not scary. Okay, not getting hit over the head. We're, uh, okay. We're not doing the rest of this lecture. Okay, now, please, an appropriate response. Okay. That's, that is much better. Okay, guys. The rest of this lecture, not fair game for the exam. If you want to read about it because it's nerdy and fun, please have at it, but we will not cover the rest of this lecture on the exam. Thanks so much for listening, and I will see you soon.